Once upon a time, there was a lively underwater world in the Gulf of Mexico. All of a sudden, part of it, around half the size of Switzerland, was more or less dead. A stable ecosystem can reach a tipping point and become inhospitable to its inhabitants. But what does that mean for us humans? We humans have undergone unprecedented development over the last 10,000 years. Among other things, we have our stable climate, rich biodiversity, and intact nutrient cycle to thank for this. However, since industrialization, we have been interfering with these ecosystems through our consumer and economic activities. And this interference risks causing natural systems that have functioned for thousands of years to tip over. The crucial question is, when will we exceed the boundaries? The research community led by Swedish scientist Johan Rockström and his American colleague Will Steffen have provided one answer to this question with the concept of the planetary boundaries. The researchers collated all of the verified scientific data for years and identified nine areas that are indispensable to the survival of humanity. These insights influence the definition of the UN's Sustainable Development Goals and are also considered directional by the European Environment Agency. Based on biophysical factors, there is a limit to the impacts that each of these nine areas can tolerate. What is the maximum acceptable impact of chemicals and new materials? How big is the hole in the ozone layer? What is the limit on air pollution by particulate matter, the acidification of the oceans, the eutrophication of ecosystems, freshwater use, and the destruction of land and forests? How much biodiversity can we afford to lose? And how much climate warming can the Earth tolerate? If we exceed these critical boundaries, we run the risk of exposing our living conditions to uncontrollable changes. The current status? Four out of the nine boundaries have been exceeded. This means that we are exiting this safe operating space and putting our good living conditions at risk. Let us take the eutrophication in the Gulf of Mexico as an example. Fertilizers from agriculture and private lands reach the Mississippi, and from there they enter the sea. Due to the high nutrient levels, algae and bacteria proliferate and consume the oxygen in the water. Fish, crabs, and other marine inhabitants move away to avoid suffocation, and this, in turn, causes considerable economic damage for humans. But that's all happening far away from here, isn't it? No. The impacts of climate change, for example, are also becoming more and more noticeable in Switzerland. We're facing more frequent heat waves, longer periods of drought, and heavier storms. Native species and habitats are endangered. If we don't act now, we will leave many unresolved problems for our children and grandchildren. According to the researchers' insights, our generation still has a chance to counteract this development. And it is still possible, thanks to the concerted efforts of science, business, and the authorities, we were able to shrink the hole in the ozone layer considerably. So, instead of risking the very foundations of life, we should adapt our technologies and behavior so that they are compatible with the boundaries of our planet. This is no easy task and requires completely new thinking and action. For example, in the area of finance, we need finance and investment decisions that take the planetary boundaries into account. How? By no longer investing in fossil fuels, but in projects with a positive impact on the environment. For example, in the economy, we need companies that minimize the environmental impacts in their value-added chains, and in this way also reduce their business risks. And we need companies that base their business models on the planetary boundaries. For example, in politics, we need political actors that create goals and conditions for society and the economy, which will lead us back into the safe operating space. For example, in society, we consumers should ask ourselves what and how much we really need and what really makes us happy. Finally, we must see our situation as an opportunity for market-altering innovations. We only have one Earth, and its resources and capacities are limited. What is unlimited, however, is our creativity and capacity for innovation. Let's use them.